Saxon Advanced Mathematics Lesson 60. You guys, we are ready for some trig fun. Our topic is factorable trig equations. And let me just show you an example of what that problem might look like. They're pretty fun. Okay, what we have here is a trig equation, and when we look at it, we can see, oh, this actually fits the form of a difference of two squares, right? This is like a squared minus b squared equals zero, right? Because that's a squ perfect square, that's a perfect square. So we can factor it just the way we would factor something like this. Like this, we would do a minus b quantity a plus b. Right, or opposite order, it doesn't matter. We can do the same thing with this, right? The square root of this would be tangent of theta minus one, right? Tangent of theta plus one equals zero. Oh, that's crazy, right? Now, using our zero factor theorem, we can say that tangent of theta minus one is equal to zero or tangent of theta plus one equals zero, right? If these two things are being multiplied together, these are just old algebra rules. We're dragging out and we're applying to trig equations. Um, if these two multiply and equal zero, then either the first one equals zero or the second one equals zero. So then the tangent of theta either equals one or the tangent of theta equals minus one. Huh, okay, that's something to think about. Now, what triangles would give us a tangent of one or minus one? Well, let's see, tangent is over Arthur, right? And so I'm thinking of a 45, 45, 90 because that's one, one square root of two. So any combination of 45s could give us these values, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna write tangent of theta equals minus one, tangent of theta equals positive one. Those were our two solutions from the other page, right? So let's look at how we're gonna get, we're looking for degree measurements, right? That will solve this between 360 and zero. So this would be a positive one, right? 45. Now let's remember the quadrants, positive and negative. Plus, plus, plus. Okay, so tangent is positive in first and third, right? So these two solutions would be these, right? It would be 45 degrees. And this one would be 180 plus 45. That would be 225, right? Those would both give us a positive tangent. This one's gonna have a positive one and a positive one. This one's gonna have a negative one and a negative one. So that's how we get the positive there, okay? And then to get negative one, it'll be here. And this angle is what? 180 minus 45, so what's that, 135? And then this angle will also be <clears throat> negative down here. And that would be, we could say minus 45, but let's say it in the positive. It would be 270 plus 45, that's 315. So these are the four angles that give us a tangent of negative one or a tangent of positive one. We don't have to go around anymore because we had that limitation. I wrote it on the other page. Right? We just need to go around once. Um, there's no coefficient in front of the theta, so we don't have to worry about that crazy head game of 
solving for actual thetas. And so I'm checking my answer and I see John has the same values that I do, right? He's got 45, 135, 225, and 315. What he did was he listed them all in order and I listed them by which satisfies which condition. I am okay with you presenting the answer either way. I kind of like to see it separated like this because it shows me how you considered which values to match which equation. And I really like that, but I don't mind the other way either. That's not bad. Okay, let's try another one. These are fun because we get to use some really basic rules of algebra to do a little bit of factoring, and then we get to use all of our fun trick. I mean, it's fun, right? Sine squared theta minus sine of theta equals zero. Zero, not theta. And again, we have this. This is in all of them, so I'm not going to write it over. All right. This is a factoring where we have like a squared minus a. So what we can do is factor it out, right? Like that. So we can divide or factor out, not divide. We'll talk about that later. We're going to factor out sine of theta. Whoops not an equal sign, a parenthesis. And that will leave us with another sine of theta there because it was squared, right? Just like we did here. Minus one equals zero. Now we're using our zero factor theorem again. If these two things multiply together and give us a zero, then either the sine of theta equals zero or the sine of theta minus one equals zero, which would mean the sine of theta equals one. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm just double checking to make sure I didn't copy anything wrong. Okay, now, where, what triangles are gonna give us these values for sine, remember sine equals Oscar had. I can't think of any angles that are going to give us this. It's not a 45, right? Because they're the hypotenuse of square root of 2. It's not a 30, 60, 90 because they're the hypotenuse is 2. And so I realized, oh, our quadrantal angles are going to do that for us, right? Sine of theta equals zero at zero degrees and at 180 degrees and it equals positive one at 90 degrees. And so those are the values I find for theta and didn't even have to draw any triangles. And here, John confirms that, again, he puts them just in a total order. I organize them by which part of the equation each one's satisfying. Either way is fine. All right, again, I, I tend to, this is more logical to me. All right. And there are a total of four problems in this. Let's flip now. I don't want to run out of space down here. Example 60.3, solve cosine squared theta equals 1. Okay, and we have our usual limitation. We only have to go once around, so I'll write that at the top. Now, this one looks confusing. Do they mean the quadrantal? Does John mean the quadrantal angle of positive one? No, because this is squared. This is cosine squared of theta equals one. And this is just plain cosine of zero degrees equals one. So this is squared and this is not, so we can't look at that. That's not gonna help us. What we need to do is figure out some way to factor this. And the key is to recognizing that if we bump this over to the other side, 
and make that a zero. Then we'll have cosine squared theta minus one equals zero. Oh, and that gives us the a squared minus b squared pattern again, okay? It's not necessary 100% that you write down the pattern that you're using, but I think it's super helpful for helping to figure out what the heck you're trying to do with these wacky looking tree equations is to say, oh yeah, this is just the basic algebraic idea. So, and again, just to make super clear, you're following what I'm thinking. This is a square, perfect square, that's a perfect square. So I can write this as cosine of theta minus one. Oh, here, let's make it plus one. The plus and the minus can be in any order. I can write it in any order, but I'm just trying to make it the same so that you guys won't get wildly confused. Okay? Now I can go back to flipping it over. This one is the cosine of theta equals negative one, and this is the cosine of theta equals positive one. Those sound like quadrantal angles again to me. So I grab my little chart that I keep handy. Okay, cosine is negative one at 180, and it's positive one at zero degrees. Okay, those are my final answers. Remember that I don't, because cosine of theta is one at zero, it would also be one at 360, but I don't have to include 360, because look at that, it's less than 360. Equal to zero, but less than 360. So I don't have to write 360 in this. So I can say theta equals, and those are my answers. Okay, so keep your quadrantal angles either handy in your hand or at the top of your brain because these do pop up in some of these problems. And now the last version of this, John is including as a precautionary tale and we'll go ahead and do it. And let me show you how it looks. Okay, same limitation up here, except this one, instead of using theta, we're using x's, so we'll just imagine that has an x in it, but the same limitation covers this problem. Okay, so this is the expression that we're given, and right away I think, boy, I don't know what to do with that, but then I remember the little trick of paying attention to the right side. If there's something over there, subtract it, get it back on the other side, and then see what we've got. Now, this is the point John wants to make. You could, either here or at this point, you could divide by sine of x. And then that would get you, this would go away and you would just have two times the cosine of x minus one equals zero. This is a terrible idea. Don't divide. Because what happens, we could, run, we could run the problem all the way out, but what, I don't want to take the time to do that, but I'll tell you what happens. By eliminating this cosine, by dividing it, we are losing some of the solutions. Okay, you know how we have multiple solutions in these problems? You will lose some if you divide. So instead, we always factor. So instead of dividing, okay, let's just put this all in a box of naughty because we don't wanna do that, okay? Going back to this, what I'm gonna do instead, well, I guess I could do it here. I'll write it over again. Two sine of x, cosine of x, minus sine of x, right? That's where we were here when we decided to divide, equals zero. Instead, we factor. So I'm gonna write sine of x over there. When I pull it out of here, I have 
2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Okay? So what that means is that either the sine of x equals 0 or this has to equal 0. Let's see, I would add the 1 and divide by 2. So the cosine of x equals 1 half. Those are our two options. Okay, when I see a sine of 0, I know that's a quadrantal angle. And I see, okay, that must be 0 degrees. x equals, not theta this time. It can be x or theta. Either of those is interchangeable. They're both kind of uh, conventional choices for our mystery angle. So sine of x at 0 degrees will make this whole thing come true. Or cosine at 1 over 2. Now, it's not a 45, 45, 90, because that would be 1 over square root of 2. So this must be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let's take a look at that. We want the cosine of x to equal 1 half. Okay, let's look at a 30, 60, 90 that's not in the grid and see what we've got here. This is the 1, this is the 2, this is the square root of 3. Cosine is a whole, so we want the adjacent to be the 1. Okay, so what we want is a one, two. This is a 60 degree angle, right? We want it oriented like this because we want the adjacent side to be one and we want the hypotenuse to be two. Okay, and we want it to be positive. So let's take a look at how that would work. We'll draw all four quadrants. Cosine, I'm gonna draw my signs here, right? Plus, 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 minus, plus, minus. We want it to be positive one half. Cosine is positive here and here. Okay, so we would have 60 degrees going like this here, right? Because then we'd have one, two, square root of three. That gives us our adjacent over our hypotenuse. This is 60 degrees. And then we would want the same thing down here, right? We would want this to be 60 degrees because there's our adjacent of one and our hypotenuse of two. So the other two angles are gonna be 60 degrees and this would be minus 60, which another way of saying that is 300 degrees. Yes. Yes, just a second, I've lost. I know what I did. Okay, so the two the, um, solutions for x that we got from this part of the equation are 60 and 300. What I neglected was in my quadrantal angles. The sine of x is also zero degrees at 180. So I need to have 180 here as well. I just picked up one of them, all right? My mistake. So now we have four solutions to this trig equation. X can be zero degrees, 180 degrees. Those both relate to this part. Or 60 or 300. Yes, that's correct. All right, so the moral of the story is when you're doing, when you're rearranging these equations, don't divide, always factor. That way you'll get all four of the solutions. And if I would have done this, I would not have gotten all four of those solutions. Okay, have fun with this lesson, you guys. I hope it makes you feel really, really, really smart. And we will talk a little bit more about it in the video chats. Okay, thank you, goodbye.